What's up, everybody? It's your boy, The Lion, here with BW Sports 1, and we are here with another episode of Combat Zone, powered by Karma Coin. Check out the cryptocurrency that gives away to charities and gives you a chance to win supercars. KarmaCoin.co today. Elite Performance 765-499-1005 with a dream of elite fitness becomes a reality. Call Zach today and get started on your journey. Revved up tattoos, 317-537-2667. Book your next ink therapy session with our boy Todd over at Revved Up Tattoos. You won't be disappointed. Bomb Burgers, that's right. 7960 US 31 South in Indianapolis. Famous for steak burgers, but these, they are the bomb. Be Lit Organics, our girl Brittany Carino has got all the natural products, phenomenal feeling, soaps, bath salts, candles, you name it, she's got it. Be Lit Organics. And the Fighters Friend, that's right, thefightersfriend.com. Give yourself a fighting chance in all recovery products. Check them out, thefightersfriend.com. Use promo code BWSports1 for 20% off your whole order. Round one, fight. What is up? What's happening? What's going down? It is your boy, The Lion, here for another episode of Combat Zone. And I have with me for the first time of many, I think, Felicia O'Day. <laughs> Hello. Nice to see you. So uh, I'm Felicia De LeBlanc. Uh, I'm coming, coming out of Canada, representing Samurai MMA. And uh, I'm really happy to be joining you guys today. Yes, we appreciate your time coming on here at Combat Zone to talk to me for a little bit. Now, kind of give, since this is your first time here on BW Sports 1, we want to give the fans that are here a little background of your combat sports career. So kind of tell us, you know, how you got into fighting and combat sports and then, you know, leading up to where we are today, getting ready for Samurai. Uh, yes, so I started fighting when I was very young. My uh, my brother was a bit rough. <laughs> he was really into war games, and he actually was able to get a community of children to fight each other all the time with sticks. And <laughs> so I was one of his uh, soldiers. I really didn't have a choice. I was born into the life. <laughs> uh, so I am. Uh, I know how to not only do fist combat, but I'm also good in uh, swordsmanship. I can even do two swords and in battle axe. <laughs> Nice. So uh, it started off like that uh, in school. I was always fighting, um, always playing football and fighting. It went hand in hand. And uh, I actually got kicked out of high school for fighting. But it was uh, against bullies and protecting uh, my friends, uh, my close friends, and, uh, you know, myself, whatever I needed to do hello. around. Hello. My baby said hello. <laughs> hello. Uh, so yes, uh, I started boxing when I was like 15. I did a couple months of it. I really loved it. But then I ended up starting my adventure. I left home at 16. I lived in Vancouver and Montreal, all around Ontario. Uh, fighting was never too far off, <laughs> but it was more um, less legal. And uh, when I, I came back to Montreal when I was 18, uh, I started a new life here. I started training again shortly after, um, maybe about one year. At TriStar, I had my first amateur combat. Uh, I went to Quebec City. I had a really good success. I won after the first round. Uh, she actually abandoned. And uh, after that, I had five more fights that year. So it was one every two months, one after another. And then I got pregnant. <laughs> so that kind of did a little break. But I never stopped training. I trained until the day before my baby was born and about a week after I was already moving again and I was within the gym in a couple of weeks. Um, so before he was eight months old, I actually had my MMA debut. 
I went by second round, Rene Kachuk, uh, one of the, the highlights, at, like, you know, one of the big mountains that I've climbed was be able to fight after having a baby. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I got my contract in May. So um, ASAP this year or beginning of next year, I'm going to be making my professional debut. Nice. We can't wait to see that because, uh, I mean, I, I've seen video footage on you. You know, um, Tim Carino over there at Knuckle Up Combat Agency has kind of shared a little bit of footage with me that we've we've been able to find. And I can't wait to see you make your pro debut. But I want to kind of go back to this. Uh, in school, you were fighting the bullies. You know, what, what kind of bullying did you witness? I mean, for one, you look like a badass. For two... <laughs> You look like a beautiful woman. So what were you getting bullied for? Well, it wasn't always me who was being bullied, like maybe at the beginning. But once you once you like fight the big bully, everybody knows who you are. They don't want to deal with you anymore. But it was always guys. I never got in a fight with a girl until I started becoming a martial artist. So uh, usually I can't handle the stimulation around me. Maybe it'd probably just be like in school, you know, people are screaming and like being crazy around me and being very aggressive. And this would give me such anxiety that it'd make me aggressive. So I, I needed everything to be calm around me. But uh, usually when I got into physical altercations, it was for protecting my friends. Uh, I had one best friend. She was a really small girl, like 100 pounds. And her ex-boyfriend was very abusive. He got a new girlfriend. They were abusive to her together and did not fly with me. I ended up getting very physical. And uh, I got kicked out of school twice for the same incident. Because the principal was like, oh, you learned your lesson. I was like, definitely not. I will kill him. <laughs> so uh, I did end up learn my lesson that you got to keep those kind of thoughts inside <laughs> and be more slick. But um, the biggest one where I got kicked out of school, he actually he was a close friend of mine. And he got into drugs. And he tried to, uh, well, rape our mutual friend, mm. who's very close to me. And he was a big guy, too. He was like six feet tall. And I did, really didn't care. <laughs> I was very upset. I ended up punching him in the balls. So he went over and then I punched him in the mouth and I ended up breaking a lot of his teeth. He got reconstruction facial surgery and he was known as the guy who got beat up by the girl. So that he had to switch schools too. But I still stand by that. Um, I was defending someone I loved and he was really in the wrong. And that kind of followed me everywhere I needed to go in my life. Um, I was just always ready for anybody, anytime. If I, you know, it, just if you deserve it, I guess. Like I don't go out of my way to hurt people. But I by no means run from a fight, and I'm ready. And if I see something, it's go time. I don't even think about it. That's that mentality that fighters um, and supporters, like you said, you know, friends, supporters, and stuff like that, have. And it comes out, and sometimes it's just spontaneous, and we can't help it. <clears throat> Excuse me. But for the right reasons, I'm absolutely 100% on your side on that, especially when it comes to uh, – Male on female type stuff. I don't I don't get down with that. So I see it. I'm like you. I'm going to jump on it and pounce. And I'm a big guy. And, you know, I, I can hit pretty well, too. But I'm not looking to hit females. You know, if you, if I see a girl getting beat up by a guy, I'm I'm in that shit right yeah, there. Yeah, you're going to make that your problem. It's like animal abuse, too, or children. It's like, I don't even know the situation. is not my business. I'm going to make it my business because that's who I am. Yep, absolutely. So tell us, kind of give us the the thoughts of, you know, you were training, you were in the fight mode, you get pregnant, you become a mom. How does that change your perspective on combat sports, on martial arts, on anything like that? Well, it is a huge major change, not only physically, but spiritually. Um, I feel like I have more of a reason to fight. Before, I didn't even know why I was fighting. It was just something to do, something that I just felt like if I could become a good martial artist, I would become a good person. That's what I believed. I was like, you would have discipline, you would have a routine, you'd be eating and sleeping properly, you'd be around people with goals. Uh, I wouldn't be partying and ruining my life. Uh, so that was the number one thing. I was like, hey, I'll become a martial artist, become my best self, and not ruin my life. That was step one. <laughs> Uh, then I had a baby when I was pregnant. I never thought I was going to fight again. I was like, okay, I'm a mom. It's done. Uh, new life. Uh, but I just kept training. I was like, okay, I'm going to stay in shape. Um, it was after I had the baby, I went through a major depression. This is pretty normal, I guess, for women or, you know, just not having a child. 
yeah, there's a lot of hormones going on, uh, lots of changes. Your relationships with everyone you know changes too. You and your parents, your relationship with your your husband, the uh, relationship with everybody changes. Your whole world has changed. And I used all this uh, this trauma and this suffering and this depression. I put it into my training because I didn't know what else to do. So I just put it all in my training twice a day, hours. I lost like 50 pounds. I just it was my life was just taking care of my baby, training. That was my life. Um, so I put all that energy into that and that's why I succeeded because, <laughs> hello, hello, yeah. Yeah. In there. you, you can't control what happens to you, but you can transmute it into something. So whatever I was going through, I put it into my training and that's what made me successful. And that's why I had a successful, uh, MMA debut and that's why I have my contract now. And that's why, uh, I'm just continuing. Uh, you need to transmute your pain into power. I like that. I like that. Transmit your pain into power. I am going to post that for sure because I love that saying. Now, kind of talking about the training aspect of Canada that's been over the past couple of years with the whole, you know, pandemic going on. Canada has been pretty shut down over the past year and a half or so. It's hard. Oh, it's hard. Like, literally. This is this is what it feels like to be in prison. Like maybe I'm being dramatic because I've never been to prison, but uh, you know it's like you have that isolation. You you were not even allowed to see your family on Christmas, Thanksgiving, nothing. Like complete isolation with a lot of hypocrisy. Like you can go to the grocery store with like forty thousand people, but you can't even have dinner with your family. So there was a lot of flip and flop, uh, opening, reclosing. Uh, you know the number one thing uh, that they said against COVID is like to be healthy you know, to not be obese, take care of yourself, but you, they make you stay inside and you can't do training and you're depressed. And I was like, wow, they really do not want us to get better, do they? Yeah. So uh, it was really hard, but uh, I just stayed in fight camp the entire pandemic. I had my fight and then a week later, the whole world shut down and I never got out of fight camp and that's what saved me. So I train uh, every single day, sometimes twice a day. I've never missed more than three trainings in a row in like five years. Nice. So even, even before the pandemic, like even during my pregnancy, I was like, fight camp never ends. So it was really hard. A lot of people gained a lot of weight. Uh, a lot of people became very depressed. Um, it's that is the real pandemic, I think, is the whole lockdowns. And uh, like that's causing way more damage than people being sick, to be honest. A lot of mental issues going on. Um, a lot of mm -hmm. depression, like you said, a lot of anxiety building up and a lot of, uh, you know, you're you're looking at stats. I know here in the States, and I'm sure it's, it's really no different anywhere else that was locked down and stuff, but you had more domestic uh, issues. You had more yeah. suicidal rates. Oh, my God. There was women dying all the time. Like, we had, like, a list of all the women who are just dying here, and I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> and children, too, uh, because you're locked up. You have no escape. You have no school. You have no friends. Uh, you can't even see the rest of your family. There has been a few cases just in, like, my neighborhood of children being killed by their parents. That's, that pisses me off, and I'm really trying to watch my language here because <laughs> that stuff right there just it is, elevates it is. me. No, it's really hard, and also uh, a lot of the athletes really suffered. Uh, they're supposed to be having fights. Uh, our cards are being changed in dates and everything. Um, a lot of fighters have mental issues to begin with, and that's why we fight. And then you just take away any social, uh, a lot of their outlets. Uh, some people like, you know, the relationships of fighters with other fighters and their coaches are really close. And it's like, uh, you know, we took a big hit from that for sure. Yeah. So what kind of training were you able to do this whole time? I mean, obviously the gyms were closed then they reopened then they close again. So what mm -hmm. type of training were you able to get in through all this well, time? I have to do everything I possibly can. Like if you see my videos, I do a little bit of everything. Um, doing uh, aerobics, kettlebell. Uh, I'm going to the park. I'm doing sprints. I'm stretching the leg up so high that I'm trying to get there too, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Lots of lots of just literally everything. So aerobics, Pilates, sprints, uh, long distance jogging. Um, I'm doing shadow, lots of shadow boxing. Uh, I'm meeting up with other fighters, like kind of like dates, and we're we're, we're training together. Uh, I even traveled to my parents like 10 and a half hours to go to the gym there and train with other people, like literally doing anything and everything I possibly can in my power to, to be ready. <laughs> so 
Now let's talk about this upcoming fight. Again, it's November 19th at the Olympia yeah. Theater. Tickets go on sale this Friday, October 15th on Ticketmaster. So make sure you're getting your tickets out there, ladies and gentlemen, to yeah, watch and be this awesome warrior <laughs> battle. There's going to be super good fights. We've got a really good fighters on our cord, uh, card. Uh, we have Alex Morgan. He's uh, he's very popular, very good fighter. Uh, Michael Dufour is going to be fighting. Uh, Kyle Propolak. We have uh, just a whole bunch of uh, talent in Quebec. And, and in Canada, they're going to be displaying here. Um, I'm I'm still waiting for a confirmation for this fight on on the 19th, where I'm be looking for someone who's going to get my weight, 125, 130. But I am open to going uh going to the states maybe to do some bare knuckle MMA or just be doing uh, the show January February in Quebec City. Nice. Okay, so we are trying to get across the border. To Ooh, my passport to is almost complete. All right. I like that. So now let's talk about this. I'm looking at Tapology, and this could be wrong because obviously some are. They do have an opponent matched up with you that says confirmed upcoming bout. Are you aware of this opponent and the name of, I, I probably say this wrong, Ekaterina Veranova? Oh, yeah, you're very close. Uh, it's Ekaterina. Um, so, yes, uh, that was supposed to be our fight. Uh, the unfortunate thing is we're from two different weight classes. So she walks around at 115. Okay. I walk around at 135. Gotcha. Um, my limit and my coach's limit is 125 minimum because right. of my body sh shape type. I have a lot of muscle. I'm really not a super tiny girl. Um, so for me to – to get down to 120, 122, 123, would just put me in jeopardy as an athlete. I know it's possible. I know you can dehydrate to that. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't been that weight since before I was 16. And I don't want to take uh, those kind of risks that are I find are unnecessary. I'm already going to be losing like 10 pounds. I, I like every pound really matters. So I can't accept the fight at uh, 120, 123. It has to be 125, my minimum. Uh, we're still trying to maybe do a negotiation with the weight. Uh, like I just can't agree to something that I can't deliver because that that's embarrassing. If you can't make weight, like you saw at the KFC, that made a whole, oh, a whole boy. thing. I'm not going to agree to do something if I know I can't do it. And then I'm going to embarrass myself. I'm going to embarrass my coach. And then we're not going to have a fight. So, uh, you know, just because I want to say yes doesn't mean I can. I absolutely 100% agree with you, Felicia, because if you have seen my video from last mm -hmm. week, being at Billings, Montana live for the weigh-ins, I was pissed for Taylor, because anybody that steps on the plane to come somewhere, regardless of where you're going, steps on the plane, and you come into weigh-ins eight, nine pounds over, that means that you were not uh, you were not coming to fight. And then, given that extra amount of time to make weight, you come in at even a higher weight when they re-weigh. That's pathetic. That's unprofessional. It is what it is. I'm not getting on my ramp. I'm, I'm not going to be right me. There. That's all I, I know. know. I know it's not going to be you. Me, when I say I'm coming at 125, I'm going to be at 125 because I said so. And that, that's what we agreed on. That's my contract. Listen, if I can weigh in at 115, that would be magical. If I can just tomorrow weigh at 115, you know what? I would dominate the 115 section, okay? But I can't, unfortunately. But I'm doing my best. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be there at 125. I'm going to put on a show. I like it. I like it. I don't see you ever missing weight because of how confident you are right there. I see in your eyes a warrior ready to battle, not taking shit from anybody, and I like it. I like what Thank I'm you. seeing. Well, I, I love wait. to fight. I love to train. This is my lifestyle. Uh, I'm all about it. I, I'm not going to embarrass myself by promising to be 10 pounds under than I am originally. Uh, be I do really, really want to fight, and that's why I'm open to crossing borders. Uh, because I am ready. I've been ready. I want to fight. I want to put on a show. And if you, if anybody who knows me, I'm just, um, I might be nice, but I'm a very violent person. And I express this in my fighting. Violence in beauty is what I'm going to say. Violence say. in beauty. Violence is beauty. <laughs> and beauty is violence some days. <laughs> Every, anything beautiful I know is very violent. <laughs> That's true. So you mentioned it. So we got to talk about it now. You've done the MMA, 
You are looking at possibly crossing the border into, I heard, bare knuckle MMA, or is it bare knuckle, or or either? Uh, it's, it's bare knuckle MMA. It's from uh, Grave Game Bread FC. Yep. You know Jorge Masvidal. I love this idea because I loved MMA because it's so free. That like, well, it's, it's, it was the freest thing you could have. That was also fair because you have the weights and you have referees. We do have rules. You can't do uh, any of that crazy stuff. Right. But uh, with bare knuckle MMA, it's a step up, more free. <laughs> and uh, that is my goal in life is to be free. So the freer you can get me to be, the more I'm intrigued. And uh, I would be down. I'd be so down. When when he, when uh, Tim told me about this, I was laying down. I sat up. I was like, yes, 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 a thousand times yes. So of course I'm with Samurai MMA. Uh, I appreciate them. I'm going to continue my fights with them. But they are open to letting us travel. So on my list, number one, it's going to be <laughs> bare knuckle MMA. And I want to I want to go to the states. Uh, I want to meet you guys. I want to meet Jorge <laughs> and uh, have a good time. And I like you know I was also watching bare knuckle uh, BKFC the other night and wow like every fight is a finish uh i like i like that finish rate uh, maybe i want to try that too um jad masan wong she's from uh, quebec city she's a really good fighter um uh, so she i believe is the first canadian to go over there and I she had a really correct she had a successful debut so congratulations and uh, you're very inspiring and i would like to follow suit i want to go to the states i want to do uh bare knuckle myself well how in your opinion how long will it be before we are able to see the wonderful stalker come <laughs> to the States? I'm working on that passport right now. I just got to send it in with my money. I got my my, uh, my photos all signed. I want to fight like tomorrow, but uh, <laughs> I got to be patient. I got to do things how they are. And, um, you know, I, I just got to follow it step by step. So uh, I guess my first step is getting my passport, uh, finish this podcast, uh, continue training, just be ready, just be get out a good way to be ready. And when I get that call, I take that opportunity. Well, I can't wait. And I know that Tim and everybody else over here on our team is is ready to see you perform, whether it be in, in Samurai, whether it be in Game Bread, whether it be in the BKFC, wherever it is and you want to go, we will back you 100%. We can't wait for that. I will be there. I will be there. I'm going to try to do all three. Let's do it. I like <laughs> and it. And I also want to say I apologize for my phone moving a lot. <laughs> uh, I don't have a stand, so I'm just going to apologize to the audience right away. But uh, I really appreciate you guys listening to me today. Well, well, before we let you go, we have a segment that I call Rapid Knockout. It's five questions. has absolutely nothing to do with the fight game. You can elaborate on any answer if you'd like. Okay. Are you ready? I am ready. Now I'm nervous, but I'm ready. Uh, don't be nervous. This is good. Question number one. What's your favorite food? Oh, shit. I knew it was going to be one of these. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I'm going to say salad. I know that's a boring answer. Okay, so but what, I, type of, what type of salad? Are we, talking, are we talking like the iceberg salad? Are we talking like a Greek salad? I'm going to get into it. I'm going to tell you my basic salad. So it's going to be iceberg lettuce with spinach. Oh, we're going to have sliced tomatoes, green onions sliced. Um, we're going to have avocados, best walnuts, almonds, shredded cheese, maybe some goat cheese, uh, literally any fruit or veggie I find in my fridge, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, you're in. Uh, I want you all. <laughs> the only thing I have a problem with is because I've never gotten the taste out of my mouth is the avocado. I cannot do oh, avocado. You got a bad one. No, no. <laughs> really, they go from zero to 100 like in a second. Like there is the best or it's like I regret. Okay. Like, well, the, I'm on the regret side right now because it obviously wasn't a good one. That's sad. I believe you should try everything twice. Okay. I will do it. now that you've told me I will do that. <laughs> I'll come over there when I come for my debut. I'll bring I'll bring a perfect avocado. We'll okay. share an avocado instead of a drink. <laughs> there we go. We'll share an avocado right after the weigh-ins. And then maybe after the fight that you win and your arms race and all that, then maybe we could share a salad, right? We'll do baby steps, baby steps. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Question number two. What is on Felicia's playlist? What is her go-to music, whether it be a genre or an individual artist or a group? What's your go-to? I really 
I know everybody says this, <laughs> but I I have a large mix of different types of artists. It, it all depends on my mood, but uh, I grew up, I think you always take your parents' interest a little bit. I grew up with the rock, okay? So uh, um, I always have go back to ACDC, you know, Aerosmith, Judas Priest, Black Sabbath. Uh, this is like my dad mom's fault. <laughs> Um, but I found my old, my own favorite artists growing up. So this is gonna be a weird list. But Marilyn Manson, uh, Trent, Les, uh, sorry, Reznor. yep, Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails, Nine Inch Nails yeah. um, Nirvana, um, Tool. Sorry, Tool should have been number one. I love Tool and Alice in Chains. And I know these. It just, I love how they make me feel when I'm in a mood. I can sing with them. They know how I feel. And, uh, you know, it's the same thing with fighting. You got to transform your pain into power. I love music when they do that. I love it. So uh, here's my question. Old Alice in Chains or new Alice in Chains? <laughs> it's all old. <laughs> no, no, no. They had a new album. I've seen them. No. In co I've seen. I've never. I was never able to see Lane Staley in concert, but I'm, I'm able to see the new Alice in Chains in concert. Okay, well, I, I'm gonna have to go with old, but I feel like okay. maybe it's because I'm. <laughs> what's your favorite song of Alice in Chains? Because um, I really, I really the, like Nutshell. <laughs> Nutshell is good. That's my favorite album. Uh, Dirt. <laughs> I like Dirt. I, I like it. I like it. Question number three. If it has nothing to do with combat sports training or anything like that, what's your favorite hobby to do on your downtime? I'm just outside all the time. So usually my 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 world's den diagram, they cross over. So training ends up being outside, but I have a hard time being in the house. So when I'm not training or with my baby, I'm outside not training. Gotcha. So you like the hiking and the, and the yeah and the yeah just adventuring. A lot of times I like to get lost on purpose, so I just zone out and I have no particular direction I'm going into. And I've been doing this since I was a kid. Maybe like I feel like oh I'm like psychic. I know where I'm going. I just randomly walk anywhere, and uh, I do that a lot. So I end up finding a lot of new places, going to new stores. Um, sometimes I get lost, but uh, it's a good couple hours. Like uh, in British Columbia, uh -huh. I did this once. I walked into the forest and three hours later I walked out and I'm pretty lucky that I walked out because apparently a lot of people die from getting lost in there, but I made it out. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Well, you're a warrior. <laughs> you're going to make it out now. Okay. So you said, you know, you like the outdoors and stuff. Is there, does your son kind of go with you on these escapades sometimes or, or Most of the time, yeah, for sure. Like he'll go anywhere with me. Uh, I even have like a baby backpack. Um, he's, uh, he does pretty good. Um, but he can't do the more extreme things. Like I would have a really hard time going to like a big mountain with him, but for, just for right now, he's only two. So he's definitely, as he gets older, the more we'll be able to uh, adventure together. Uh, like we just went to Timmins. Um, I just got back yesterday. So, uh, we were walking around uh, the gold mines and out in the nature. And he absolutely adores it. And the oxygen level is like 40% more. I swear, like to really breathe out there. Oh, and I bet it just. It smells, tastes, and everything just It's clear. just clean. It's just clean. And then I come back here, and I'm like, oh, my God, it is not clean here. <laughs> well, just remember, everybody out there, just because you wander doesn't mean you're lost. Wanderers don't always have to be lost. Question. I think it's a feeling. It's a feeling. It so. is. I like it. I like it. Question number four. Again, take all the, the combat sports and training out of it. I'll try. <laughs> I know. I know. So whether to participate or to watch, what's your other favorite sport? Football. So I grew up playing a lot of football. I thought that was going to be my sport because I loved it. I loved everything about it. I love running. I love tackling. I love tackling. I love throwing the ball. I love catching the ball. Um, I just, I just love, I'm just very physical. I just want to grab you and shake you around a little. This is not fight related. I swear to God. <laughs> I told you it's hard. It's hard. It is. Okay. So do you, do you have a favorite team that you like to watch? No, because me, I'm a participator. Uh, the only sports I ever really watch is UFC sometimes boxing like Tyson Fury versus Wilder yes and once in a while hockey but in large groups of beer <laughs> never never an alone thing but I will watch UFC alone like like 
it could be like two o'clock in the morning. I have my headphones. I'm like watching UFC. Like it's like that. I like it. I like it. All right. Final question here. You've made it through <laughs> rapid knockout. Final question. Whether it be on the sports and entertainment side or your personal side, who's your favorite role model growing up? Hmm. Mm -mm. Okay, this I have I have two on, on both sides. Yeah. So personally, who probably impacted me the most as a person growing up would be Marshall Mathers, Slim Shady, Eminem. <laughs> because um, not only do I like to fight, I, I'm definitely I'm an artist. So I like to make, make music. I like to write poetry. Um, uh, I really made a lot of songs, and Eminem had inspired me. He also helped me go through, like, a rough childhood. I lived in Windsor right next to him in Detroit, too. So we okay. – it's like right, it's like next door. So Eminem that's really a, that's a hell of a space in between, but I get what you're saying. No, it's not. It's really not. Windsor is like like twenty minutes swim away from Detroit. But don't you have to you have to like go on a boat, right? You can't just drive over there. You could swim over. Oh, or take shit. the bridge. Or take the bridge. Uh so anyways, Eminem really influenced me a lot. I still I still adore him. I still love his music. And uh I'm really happy that he opened up his own mom's spaghetti oh, restaurant. Yeah. Good job. Uh, my also other influence, I guess, would be George St. Pierre. Uh, he's a Canadian martial artist from Montreal here. Uh, I even went to the same gym as him in TriStar. So he is very influential for many, many people. I love that he was an all around great athlete. He wasn't just a great fighter. He's like a gymnast. Uh, even right now. Uh, I see him flipping, flipping onto his bed. Yeah. Yeah, he's in crazy good shape. So that's very inspiring in itself, just that he's always trying to become a better athlete. Uh, he just got inducted into the Hall of Fame. Congratulations. So, yeah, Eminem, George St. Pierre. <laughs> those, your, those what's, your favorite, what's your favorite song of Eminem's all time? Mm, mm -hmm. This is a hard one. Till I Collapse. Uh, mm. Yeah, that's probably going to be one of my walkout songs, Till I Collapse. Nice. Because that, that's like story of my yeah. life. It, it's like it, that is like the story of a warrior of a fighter is like you just you don't stop until you collapse that's the only acceptable answer there is no give up there's until i die see next time you say something like that you need to bring the camera closer so the eyes are there until no, i the die eyes, yeah, the eyes are like <laughs> dreading gonna, into it i like gonna it. fight until i die i like it i like it I can't wait to see you in there again. Felicia Day, LeBlanc, thank you again for your time. Here's your moment. Sponsors, friends, families, anybody that you want to shout out, the platform is yours. Uh, yes, shout out to, first of all, Samurai MMA. Uh, I'm happy that I found you guys. Uh, shout out to Be Lit Organics, amazing products. I'm uh, going to use their CBD KO uh, knockout oil like ASAP. Get I used the, recovery uh, milk. I have the Savage soap, and I'm not going to lie. It's one of the best soaps I've ever had because, um, you know, I sweat a lot when I'm training and working out, and it feels so good after that. I think it might just be because I'm a girl, but I love the smells. I'm like, I'm still smelling the T-shirt they sent me. It smells like lavender. I'm just like, yes, more, please, more. <laughs> so uh, they're an amazing sponsor to have. I also have uh, HKA USA sponsor, also a really good one. I love their gloves. Uh, I don't, if you've seen my videos lately, I've been using them. They're super comfortable. Uh, they fit very nice. I sh should be getting uh, a pair of MMA gloves coming soon. I'm going to do a photo shoot with that in the park. That's going to be fun. Um, also, shout out to uh, my parents. Thank you. I'm alive. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> and, and, uh, and also, Knuckle Up Comment Agency. Thank you guys so much. Well, we appreciate it. Again, Felicia O'Day LeBlanc. Coming in hot November 19th. Hopefully that uh, we can get the, a confirmed opponent here very soon so we can really start pointing that uh, pointing that fight out for Samurai MMA. And we cannot wait to see you here in the States. Get that passport done, girl. Come I'm on, on it, over. I'm on it. I'm on it. I yes, know. I am. Come Thank on you over so and we will help you out as much as possible. Everybody out there, Felicia Day LeBlanc, Coming in hot November 19th at Samurai MMA. Go check her out on uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, anywhere else that you are. Yeah, just, uh, just Instagram, stalker.mma.1. Message me, and we'll meet up and have an avocado. There you go. I can't wait. 
Well, Felicia, thank you again for coming on with me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Ciao. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank Bye. you. Bye. For Combat Zone, I'm the Lion. This has been another episode. We will see you again next time. Peace.